Okay, so these CNMF items have finished successfully. And I'm going to open three viewers so we can look at them together. Okay, let's load this one here. Let's load this one in viewer number two. And let's load this one in viewer number three. Okay, let's take a look. So, okay, it's a bit too big. Okay, so over here you can see that from the ROI manager, uh, it has found 65 components for our first parameter variant. It has found 61 for our second parameter variant, and it has found 59 for a third parameter variant. So that makes sense because in our first parameter variant where it found the most components, we set the lowest min SNR parameter in the second one, it was set to 2, and in the third one, it was set to 3.5, which is quite high. So the min SNR is um, a signal-to-noise ratio threshold parameter. And you can also view the parameters that were used to arrive at the current viewer work environment that you were seeing through the console. Let's go to console, import. This is just to print things nicely. So we can do get work environment dot history trace, and that will show us all the parameters that were used to arrive at what we are currently seeing in the viewer. So here you can see first there was motion correction with these parameters and then there was CNMF with these parameters and this one is the one the parameter variant which found the least and as you can see the min SNR was set to quite a high value in this one. So for now I'm going to use our second parameter variant for the rest of the tutorial so I'll close the other ones. You can also get the detrended delta F over F for your traces using the Cayman detrend D over DF over F function, which you can access through here. Let's just use these settings for now. And in the ROI manager, you can choose to view like, the raw curve data, the DF over F, or the spikes as well. Okay. And when you, in the ROI manager, when you use the, the list here, the, when you click on an item here, the spatial location is highlighted in white and the curve also gets highlighted in white as you can see here and you can also choose to just view one at a time okay so I'm going to show you how you can annotate ROIs manually. You can also annotate them through the script editor and I'll make a separate video to show you how to do that. This can be useful uh, perhaps if you want to 
map cell identity to some uh, known atlas based on their position or something. So the, the categorical data types that you see here for ROI tags correspond directly to what you have set in your project configuration. So in our project configuration, we have set cell type and anatomical position for ROI type columns. And those options are exactly what we see here for tagging labels onto these ROIs. So let's show you how to tag them. So let's just say maybe this was anterior. And when you hit enter on your keyboard, it will set this tag and it will move on to the next one so you can go through them quite quickly, even if you have to annotate them manually. Say this was cortical type A. And when you press page down on your keyboard, it will take you to the next ROI. Again, this is to help you move through them quickly. And it may be useful for you to look at one ROI at a time in order to do this manual annotation. Say, Okay. And when you're editing ROIs um, through the ROI manager, sorry, annotating ROI tags, you can use the right and left arrow keys on your keyboard to play the video backwards and forwards. This might be useful for you to annotate ROIs, like if you're annotating perhaps cell types manually or cell morphology manually. You can also press home and end to skip to the beginning and end of the video. Okay, so after you have annotated all information of interest in your view of work environment, so that includes all of the ROIs that you're happy with, all of the stimulus information that you're happy with, and all of your ROI tags. You can add the view, this current viewer work environment, so like a snapshot of exactly what you're seeing, to your project. Um, and one thing, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, is that you can also delete ROIs. So if you right click, uh, maybe let's choose something that's a bit visible. Yeah. So you can right click here, delete and that is removed from your sample. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add this to our project. So to do that, let's go to File, Add to Project. So the first two mandatory pieces of information which you must add is an animal ID and a trial ID. And you are, you can never change the animal ID and trial ID later on. There is a, a workaround to do this, and you can see the FAQ in the documentation on that. Uh, but um, the reason is because these are partially used as unique identifiers for all the information that is related to this sample. So let's just say animal one, say trial one, and we have an entry available here for age, and that is because if we see in our project configuration, we added a custom column called age. So all of the cust for all the custom columns that you enter here, you will receive an entry for that over here. So let's just say perhaps this was a 10 week old mouse. And then you can enter any relevant comments which you may have for this sample. So for example, I usually use this to note if there was anything particularly interesting about the recording, like if the sample or this, this trial had particularly strong responses, or if perhaps the video was very noisy, or whether there were a lot of artifacts or scanner issues or anything else which could be important later on. 
Okay. And when you're happy with this, just click proceed. And it will take a few seconds to add it to your project. Okay, done. Now we can close this. So now from our welcome window, you can open the project browser and you can see that our sample has been added and the other information that's related to that. So what you see in all of these other columns will just be a unique list of the data pooled from the entire project. And there is quite a bit of um, a filtering that you can do with uh, basically your project database and that is uh, described in quite some detail in the documentation for the project browser. And you can double click a sample in the project browser in order to reopen that in the viewer. So for example, do that over here. Oops. You can see that the sample has been reopened along with all of the information that is related to the sample. So for example, the stimulus maps, of course, the ROI annotations that we have made, as well as like the other custom columns that you have for this, so like age. Okay, and in the next video I'll show you how you can do downstream analysis using the flowchart.